Okay, I hope you're having a great weekend. Everybody's enjoying themselves because Neo had some really nice um, upside in the last couple of days and weeks. Um, but be aware that Neo is a very volatile stock. In case you want to see my views when I think this might be happening and where we are at, check out my Patreon. By the way, this is a way to support this channel. I just done another market update, which is based on a previous Patreon post plus. I've done some additional Patreon context and also commented on small caps like SAP Health in particular, like the Q1 earnings and um, yeah, a little bit about that. Anyways, but back to the topic, what I think here is a strategic shift happening around NEO. And this shift with NEO is around battery technology. So if you're following this channel closely, you know that I've made a video about the first one about the 800 volt battery technology. Um, I found a patent and said like, well, it seems like NEO is working on combining 400 volt and 800 volt battery technology together and also making it uh, yeah, possible to use battery swap stations for this. And also similarly to CATR, it seems that NEO is working on a battery that is modular, so can be split in different capacities. And well, yeah, this was kind of confirmed during the Q1 earnings call. And I think this is uh, a very big news that some people missed. So let's gonna talk about this. But the second thing is about cylindrical batteries. So similarly to the Tesla 4680 batteries, um, you know, which are introducing this um, larger cells and also um, the tapless um, innovation. It seems like NEO is working on something very similar. And um, yeah, I mentioned it also that I found a patent around this and it's now just surfi uh, surfacing now uh, a couple of months later. And so uh, the, the bigger news here is that kind of this stuff got confirmed in the earnings call. So I guess this is stuff which we, we will be hearing in the upcoming uh, next NEO uh, day event. Uh, because if you listen to the earnings call, it's also about um, the next generation platform. Let me see if I can find that one. Because what I mentioned during the earnings call actually is that the next question is about a mass market brand. Our plan is to start the delivery of the products of the mass market brand starting from the second half of 2024. The product is going to be based on the Neo technology platform 3.0. So that's the next um, generation of platform. And we believe the mainstream products of the mass market brand is going to be priced around, uh, around 200,000 to um, 300,000 RMB. This next platform is going to support battery swapping and is going to use our in-house development and manufacturing of batteries for the mass market brand product. So this is where NEO is kind of starting something new because in the past we know they had this very close relationship with CATR uh, more in specific and um, usually the, the, uh, the strategy by NEO was to kind of um, you know, try and f focus on their core capacities, their core activities, their core resources which are in the area of user experience in the area of um, design and yeah let's say also in the area of um, building this whole ecosystem and what they seem to think is now necessary to do as a next step is to integrate battery development more in-house not only for this mass market brand maybe this is a cost factor so this is going a little bit in, in, in a similar direction to what Tesla is doing right now. But of course we've seen the signs, right? With CATR launching their own um, battery swapping system, with um, NEO um, executives uh, among them Lidin um, visiting and meeting uh, the general manager uh, or, or the founder also of BYD. So there seems to be a need of diversification of the battery technology. And um, it seems like this might be kind of a, let's say um, a, a bottleneck right now, it, maybe in terms of production, they have mentioned it in a couple of um, earnings calls also that they, there might be some battery constraint limiting them also in pushing out more vehicles. And we also need to know that of course, with the battery swapping, they have to, 
um, you know, always have those additional batteries as well on top for the battery swap stations, right? And I also covered on the channel that they are working on uh, with a company called We Lion, uh, so Beijing-based startup on something uh, that is a hybrid solid-state battery. So that's the battery coming up by the end of this year, 150 kilowatt hours up to 1000 kilometers of range. This one is hybrid solid state. So this technology is a whole new uh, battery chemistry and um, it's having some advantages in terms of security or safety, uh, in, in terms of range, obviously. Some disadvantages, I would say, in terms of cost for now, unless they are becoming very, very big in scale. But uh, I mean, the overall topic here is that NEO by themselves starts to get deeper and deeper into the research of battery technology. And in the past, what they've kind of done is they have taken CATL cells and they have put them into their um, modular packs, the, the so-called cell to pack um, technology. So the, the batteries got assembled by, by NEO. So there is something similar going on to also what Tesla is doing, you know, some in-house assembly already. But it seems that um, NEO is now starting to go the, uh, kind of the next step in terms of um, deep on the battery chemistry level, on the, on the battery cell level, they're innovating now and start to do some things in terms of, you know, are they cylindrical? Are they based on 400 volt technology or 800 volt technology, which might offer even faster charging and some additional benefits. And so I would say um, this also shows a little bit of a, um, an ongoing theme in the industry. Um, you know, like uh, which part of your supply chain do you vertically integrate? Which part do you outsource? Which part is um, kind of crucial to your margins and your, um, your kind of capabilities to scale up and to sell at, um, at a, uh, of course, above your cost level? So um, I think these kind of things are happening now. And in, a ter in, in terms of NEO, they have decided to bring it in-house. And that's a, a, a huge shift, to be honest, um, because for now, NEO has been kind of viewed as, as this company who is really not doing a lot by themselves, right? And I think lots of it has actually been due to the fact that they have almost went bankrupt in, uh, yeah, during the time before they got bailed out by the Hofei government. And so now they seem to be in a different position. First of all, we noticed that they're hiring a lot of people in the autonomous driving departments. So that's lots of where their R&D expenses are going. But now bringing also these battery technologies more in-house. I think what they possibly have learned in the last couple of months is, first of all, that their venture with this WeLine uh, company seems to have been quite successful. I know this can only be deemed really successful once those batteries are being rolled out and people can experience them and we'll see how well they are doing. But I guess that's what we can read into that. And the second one is that they kind of feel some pressure from those external battery providers, especially if you consider situations like the lockdowns, supply, ch supply chain issues and so on. And um, I think these are the lessons that NEO has learned. And so uh, this might be a, a quite a big shift, which kind of brings NEO a little bit closer by the, in, in terms of the business model and, and in terms of what they are doing um, towards what Tesla is doing. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, a good thing and a bad thing, right? So the good thing, of course, is, um, yeah, you would say that NEO owns more of their technology. And second of all, they can more exploit this technology in a way and more benefit from it. The second one is this will also be more costly and will maybe slow them down a bit and make also um, some, some things, some relations with, like, let's say, a CATL or BYD a little more complicated. But anyways, I think that's a, a big takeaway from the Q1 earnings. And so I want to put it out there again. 
Um, leave it up for you guys to discuss in the comments what you think about this. Um, is this the right move to do? And um, let's see how this pans out. But definitely, I think this is something um, very crucial to Neo stock and also the business in, in general that um, I don't see any articles out there talking about or any other YouTubers. So I hope that's uh, interesting for you guys. Let me know what you think about it. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and see you in the next one.